The first question that I'm going to ask you today, whoever wants to dive in first, feel free. How does the way we design shape our well-being? I don't think well-being is something I can give anybody. Mm. I think, and this is quite a, uh, an unusual take, perhaps, on the topic. So the way I design is not saying I can give, design, I can give well-being through my design. I can support you to choose to be well. So what I can do is one thing, what you have to do is another. That's interesting. I would like to, to com com be combative in that sense where there's an onus on the designer in yeah. my mind, right? In the creative, in the architect, because you're ultimately making the decisions that people are going to walk in and live in. Yeah. So the way that you phrase it almost sounds like there's a, a conversation between that person's experience and also the architect's or, or designer's decision making. Yes, there is. It's a dynamic relationship. Yes, yeah, it's a dynamic relationship. Yeah. If I think I'm going to affect somebody completely, then I think I'm God. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't happen. I mean, no. I'd love that. You know, Cue yeah. the theme well, music, I, right? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I think for me, the interesting question is like, what do we mean by well-being? OK, and we need to almost start with that. For me, I, it's, it is quite a vague term. Everyone, it means different things to different people. For me, it's about health and creating healthy buildings. And while I completely take on board, what Alina's saying that yes, there's you know absolutely like you can't we can't provide a building that's going to cure someone of cancer or cure someone's depression. However, what we can do is create buildings that are going to support human health. People have got on board with the sustainability message now. That's being integrated into everything we do. It's Briam is mandatory in every commercial building, but yet with well-being designing for health that's a lot of people aren't kind of seeing it as a mandatory, a must have thing. How do you think wellness, you know, or the conscious design of wellness is gonna shift the way the world looks in the next few years? I think the future is right now. I think well-being and the effect that all these, this, this conversation on well-being and um, wellness is having, is having an effect today. I think COVID has really made a, you know, so much um, negative effect, of course, on this world. But I think it's really highlighted the importance of well-being and, and health and how important it is for everybody. So I feel like it's just building on years of, you know, championing that we've all done. Um, a lot of research has been done and it's time is now. It's not in the future. We're in an age of information now. So to design for people and assume they don't need certain things or to think that, oh, this is going to be fine if they don't have it. No, you've really forgotten that we're evolving. Day by day, we've been exposed to information that are extending our needs from what they once was. Look around you. The world and everything in it is a how-to manual for manifesting visions. We're living in conditions comprised of other people's dreams, ideals, and hopefully well-thought-out decisions. Only, do we realize how powerful it is then to be in a position of design and architectural influence and still be emotionally inconsiderate? Now, you can woefully dismiss this, although I propose you take stock of what this poetic inquisition is. A series of probing questions with genuine inquisitiveness. 